everything is all rigged up and ready to go. It's time to go fishing. How's it going, y'all? Welcome back to the episode of Fishing ATX. I've made it, y'all. Back out here again at Lake Caddo. For the second year in a row, I've made it back out to this lake. I'm so freaking excited, man. Unfortunately, this year, I'm without my friend Pierce, but this time I have my family with me. I have my dad, my brother, my granddad. They've all joined me. Not out here fishing today, but y'all will see them at some point along this trip. We have made it out. We got a little weekday trip here. Gonna be staying a Monday through Thursday kind of style. So not a super long trip, but enough time to wear we should catch plenty of fish. The only thing is out here in East Texas, especially there has been a lot of rain so far this spring and into early summer. And because of that, the lake, it's pretty flooded. It's not as bad as I thought it'd be, honestly. I thought it'd be a lot more flooded than this. Like the current would be a lot worse. It's really not that bad right now, which is kind of nice. So I still think I got a, at least a decent shot at catching some fish. The fishing reports are saying fishing is tough and just mainly because of the flooding, the fish have really been spread out. So my expectations have been really tempered back because we crushed them here last year, caught them really well in just a couple days, but I don't know how it's gonna be this year. Definitely still think there's a chance of getting some good fish today, but I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna hit all the spots I was fishing last year and the spots I had confidence in, but I'm also just gonna explore a lot. And I'll tell y'all too right now, it is hotter than hell out here. It is so hot in the main lake. I'm sweating so bad. I cannot wait to get underneath these tree canopies, get some shade and hopefully find some fish. <sighs> Just so freaking happy to be back out on one of the coolest lakes I've ever fished and probably one of the coolest lakes on earth. It is just beautiful out here. So regardless of how many fish we catch and how well I do, I think it's still gonna be an incredible trip just getting a look at the nature and the scenery out here. With that though, y'all, gonna head down to the first spot, get some fishing underway. I have about five hours so the sun goes down. So I'm gonna try and make the most of this first day out here on Cattle Lake. So happy to be back fishing this lake again. This is just such a gorgeous, beautiful place. It's hot. It is very hot, but I will say it is not as hot as it was last year, at least. <laughs> you know, it's only like 98 today. I was here last year, it was 110. The feels like was 117, so a little better. For right now, I was going to try and get on moving bait bite. It was a little spinner bait here. You know, we got stained water, we got pads, we got a bunch of cover. Really don't think you can really beat a spinner bait right now. I'm going to probably throw a chowder bait through here, too. Just try to get on moving bait bite. Well, I can. It's still a little early. Fish might not be as fired up as I'm hoping to see them. But that also being said, I was getting on a moving bait bite back in this area here last year at like one o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so anything is possible. For now, that is going to cover some water. And then once we get back in some of these big old trees, I'll be just flipping a Sanko and some jigs around. I don't really throw Sankos very often, like a Texas rig Sanko. It's a great lure. I mean, especially if you're a beginner, but I don't throw them much anymore. But I will say they are really effective out here in the lake record freaking 16 pounder was caught on one so i definitely don't think you can go wrong and a lot of my bigger ones i landed last year here were on one so all outs fails you know and you can't catch them in this flooded water i mean a senko should at least get you something <laughs> whole goal today is just have some fun and then hopefully find a pattern just something to build off for tomorrow and the coming days it's just crazy out here too man because it just everything looks good i mean there's you can't make a bad cast which sometimes can be really tough though like when you can't make a bad cast it's like there's just too much good stuff to fish so you gotta start picking out little details, singling in on those. Good thing is I fished some lakes like this back home. So I have a pretty good idea of what I wanna be doing. There's a fish, little guy, little baby. Little buddy, but he's in the boat. And it's a crappie. What? <laughs> That's so random. <laughs> I'll take it though. I haven't caught a crappie in a minute. I was gonna say, when I was reeling that in, that didn't look like a bass. Well, my first Cattle Lake fish of the year isn't even a bass, it's a crappie. <laughs> That's funny, man. Hey, I'll take it though. I haven't caught a crappie in a while. I love these guys. Such good eating. You're lucky, buddy. You're not going on the table tonight, but y'all are very good eating. All right, thank you, friend. We'll see you later. All right, well, not the target species, but I'll never complain about catching a crappie. We're on the board. I don't even think I've caught a crappie this year, if I'm being honest. Too. Maybe I've caught a couple, but I, just, I mean, I don't fish for them. I just catch them on accident a lot of times. I haven't caught one on accident in a minute, so there you have it. A little crappie there. Our first fish of the trip. What the hell is that? Fish. Is that a bowfin? What 
is that fish. What fish is that? I know there's bowfin in here. Is that a bowfin? I really couldn't tell what that was. I don't see it now. Damn it. There's one. Whoa, okay. Wow. God damn. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Dang, I'm mean, literally first fish the trip, first good bite. That was probably like a four or five pounder. How the f did that come off? You gotta be kidding me, man. Damn it. Gotta be kidding me. Two years in a row, freaking heartbreak, man. Every big fish I hook here pops off. Damn it. Just head shook at the boat and popped off. <laughs> That's a hell of a first bite, ain't it, though? Good grief. Hooked him right over those logs there, and I knew it was big the second I hooked it. I don't know. I mean, it's probably between a four and five. Is this water so murky? I really don't know, but it's good fish. I mean, I saw it. Mmm. can't say I didn't expect it to be slow. You know, I thought it was gonna be slow for sure, but man, that was rough. At least I didn't get skunked. Still caught that one crappie, which is pretty sweet. Very frustrated that I lost. The only bass I hooked today was like a five pounder. <laughs> of course I lost it. I mean, if I got in that fishing, that would've been a completely different day, honestly, but it is what it is. Can't go back now. I mean, it does feel good that regardless, you know, the one bass I did get to eat today was a big one. So it's definitely something to build off of. I got a lot of learning to do. I mean, the lake's just not fishing good right now. The reports are all saying that. So I understand. I'm not like too down myself or anything, but I just got some more learning to do, man. I think I just, I still have not figured out really a pattern. I didn't see a whole lot of fish moving around tonight. So I'm hoping in the morning I'll be able to figure out a little bit more of a pattern. I'm going to continue just trying to go back into those uh, flooded tree forest areas and just flipping those trees and just continuing to try new baits on them until I find one that works. I think that's what's going to happen. And I'm just going to keep trying new baits and hopefully I'll eventually find one that works. Either that or I can just find some fish schooling up a little bit and catch them on the spinner bait and crank bait because that's what I did last year. So we'll figure it out. Not the best first day for sure, but you know what? Like I said, didn't get skunked. We got a whole couple more days to go. Got plenty of time. Feel pretty confident I'm going to figure things out. For now though, I'm going to head inside, get some sleep, get a little food in me as well. Be back at it bright and early in the morning. I'm going to put my head down and it's time to go to work now, guys. I'll see y'all in the morning. Alrighty, y'all. Welcome to a new morning here on Caddo Lake. We're back at it bright and early the next morning doing some fishing here. Unfortunately, don't have a whole lot of time this morning because like I said, I am here with my family. And at 9.30 today, my family's going on a little swamp tour, which of course, that's yeah, a pretty cool little thing. I got to go join them for that. Also, we only brought one car, <laughs> so they need the car, but it is currently about 5.30 in the morning. I have until about 8.30, give or take, to fish. So only three hours, so I'm not going to talk here very, very long. Just wanted to let you guys know what's going on. I'm trying a new spot again today, going to try some new techniques and just continue to try and figure them out. Really, the whole goal for this morning, kind of like yesterday, is just to actually try and get on a pattern and just try to find a consistent bite if there is any. I mean, I know the fish are spread out right now. I know there's not a lot of consistency, but I'm just going to try to do my best to find one if I can. Only on three hours, so like I said, not a lot of time. I'm going to get to running right now, get to the first spot. I'll see y'all there. Yeah, I'm truly back in the Cattle Lake Wonderland now at this point. Yeah, this is a part of the lake that I've never seen in person. 
I've only seen on YouTube. I know it's good. I mean, I've seen guys catch a lot of fish through here, but like I said, you know, with this water being so high, I have no expectations hardly. That gum, bro, this current is strong. This freaking flood current is strong. I mean, I'm just sitting here for one second and the back of the boat's already been swung out from behind me. I'm just gonna have to keep up with it. It's fine, actually, because I'm not gonna use my troll motor. <laughs> At first, which will be nice. Save me some battery. Getting ready to change batteries out on this trolling motor, and literally the lithium battery I just ordered literally got to my house a couple hours after we left yesterday. Freaking heartbreaker right there. I smelled something. Okay. Disconnect it right now. I thought I smelled something. Yep. <clears throat> not seeing fumes as much now. No, I mean, I would definitely not use it anymore. All right, I'm not gonna speak too soon here, but all my wires, everything looks fine. The board underneath looks fine. The only thing is there's a little burn spot. You can see it right there. My dad and I both just took a little look at the troll motor here. I think the problem, what happened, was the fact that some stuff out of the trees got down inside the trolling motor and that's what sat on the board and it lit it on fire. I mean, I just tested the trolling motor to see if it was gonna run and it runs fine. It's actually running like really, really well and it looks really nice. I definitely still smell a little bit of the burn for sure, like you can smell a little bit of the burn smell in there and I can see where it was burned, but I, I there was some little like tree debris. Like, let me see if I can find any. Yeah, like, like this stuff right here, there was a good amount of it still sitting inside the little shaft there where the wires are. I'm 99% sure that's what happened is that a little piece of debris got down on the motor and then in doing so, ended up lighting on fire, which I mean, scared the everything hell out of me. I thought I had electrical fire and I was just, I mean, more than anything, I was just scared, I mean, A, I was like, yeah, my troll motor's probably done for, but B, I don't want, you know, the fire to spread and like light the front of my boat on fire, my carpet catch fire. I mean, cause that could have been a really, really bad deal. So I thought the trip was over for sure for the last hour or so. Looking like now, fingers crossed, not gonna count anything, you know, not gonna count my chickens for the eggs hatch here, but I think I should be okay. I think we're all right. I'm gonna put everything back together. I'm gonna let it sit. I'm gonna charge up my battery again because we got some more stuff we're doing here today. I'm gonna take a nap. But then later on in the afternoon, I'm gonna head back out and hopefully, fingers crossed, shouldn't have any problems. Just really gotta make sure that no tree debris gets down in there and lights on fire again because that's not a good deal. Like I said, just be real quiet. And literally, I mean, there's no, you can't really make a bad cast right now. Take the sink out here. Just gonna flip it on the tree. Just gonna let it sink to the bottom, and okay. it's pretty shallow, as you'll see it. And then I'm gonna pop it. Let it sink. Pop it twice, and it's, it's real shallow, so you don't have to pop it too violently. And then the whole way back here is gonna pop it and drag it. So it's, it's okay to hit the bottom. No, you want to hit the bottom. That's Got the it. point. I mean, most time when you get bit too on these trees. Mm -hmm. Um, you're gonna get bit right on the base of this, these trees. It's a fish gonna be around the trees. So a lot of times you take a few, like say I cast right here, let it hit the bottom, I pop. I'm popping it over the roots. The roots will feel like a bite, so don't let that fool you. But you see now that I haven't gotten a fish, pretty much I can just reel it back up because a lot of times if you don't get a fish off the tree, you're not gonna get a fish. Gosh, dude, this looks insane. Like this looks like you can catch a hundred fish back here. And you probably, you probably can when the conditions are right. <laughs> Like this is such a good lake. I'm like, I'm so disappointed how bad it's fishing right now. Like even last year when we were here and it was so hot, we still caught a bunch of fish. <laughs> there he is right there. Oh yeah, I'm well aware. That's why I came over here. I see fish moving. There's a fish moving over here too. Oh, there he is. 
gotta be kidding me. He freaking hammered it. He ran off with it. I don't know how I missed him. I don't know if he just didn't have it when I set the hook or what, but he hit it while he was running off. I just need to see more fish moving around because, like, literally, I mean, I saw fish moving and I got them to eat. But I don't even think half is the fish being stubborn. I think half this is we're just not even around fish right now. <laughs> I think it's kind of partial, a little bit of both. A little bit of stubbornness, a little bit of we're just not finding a lot of fish. No, they're not. I don't know. They're just really spread out, too. They're like, just, they're not grouping together. They're not really holding to a lot of stuff. Come on, come get it, come get it. Come. There he is, there he is. Yep. Yeah, I saw him blow up. He's not a bad fish, too. There we go. Not a terrible one. Oh my gosh, dude. Holy cow. I saw I saw him blow up on the edge of the tree. Right as he blew up, I took a cast over there and I got him. I just fell off there. Oh my gosh. It has been way too difficult to get one. That was my first largemouth actually in the boat. Yeah, because the water being so dark and the colors here. Actually, normally the water being dark doesn't allow them to get good colors, but just because of all the, the sunlight they get in the water. Yeah, beautiful fish, pretty right? Pretty really is beautiful fish. Golly, saw him blow up right there, and I was able to stick him. Damn, Brad, it's been way too hard. Nice fish, though. Thank you, friend. Alrighty, I went ahead and I dropped my brother and my dad off. We were going to get some dinner. And I made a long run down to the other side of the lake. I fished a lot of this area when I was here last year and caught some good fish. It wasn't crazy good, but I mean, hell, it's fish, <laughs> fish better than how, you know, everything else I've fished out here so far is fished. So I'm gonna try it, see what we can do here. Gosh, it is just so beautiful out here. It's like, yeah, it stinks much, the fishing sucks, but man, it's just, Blows my mind, knocks my socks off by how gorgeous it is. Oh wow, there's like a hawk's nest. Holy cow, I didn't even see that. That's incredible. Big old hawk's nest, mama and daddy in there. That is just unbelievable. I'm looking back at the hawk's nest right now. Y'all aren't gonna be able to see it, just due to how small they are, but those two babies in there, I can see them sticking their heads over the top. I mean, that's just incredible. I mean, look at the horizon, too. Look over there, I'm hearing fish blowing over there. Really, the main lake is the only thing I've not tried yet, so I guess we'll try that. Dude, how the ever-living did I not hook that fish? I literally saw its back come out of the water. <sighs> it's been that kind of day, bro. I swear. Gosh, there's literally right here. I mean, it's gone now, but still. Boop. There he is. Wow. Okay. I have no idea how big this fish is, but he feels freaking giant. Yeah, that's a giant. Bigger than the one from yesterday. It's in my other line too. Oh my gosh, come here. I got it. Let's go. Dude, dude, dude. Yes. Oh my gosh. After all the struggling, after all the struggling, easily 12 to 14 hours of only two fish. Got a Cattle Lake Giant. 
That is so, look at the proportions on that fish. Massive gut. Like, oh my gosh. Not even that long. I mean, it's probably only like a 21 inch or so. But that thing is heavy. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's why I came all the way out here. You know what? I haven't hooked a whole lot of fish so far to this point, but the ones I have have been really big. I lost one yesterday that was probably close to five. This one's definitely bigger than that. I saw it bust in the pads. That's why I took the cast over there and it hammered it. Okay, that was a little wrong. <laughs> Still five two though. It's just so short. I mean, it has the gut to be a freaking trophy, but still a five pounder. At a minimum, I've at least gotten the fish back that I lost from yesterday. Gosh, unbelievable. Look at that freaking fish, man. Unbelievable. It's only my third fish I've caught all trips. Only the, you know, fourth one I've even hooked. But a 5'2". That's why I come out here, man. This lake's got some freaking giants in it. This makes all the struggling worthwhile. It's not that we've been struggling just because I haven't figured them out. It's just because the lake's just not fishing good due to the flood right now. But this makes it all worthwhile, man. Holy cow. Let's go ahead and get this fish back. Unbelievable fight with this big fat mama. Got some pretty little markings on her side, too. There she goes. Made it back to the cabin now. As you can see, the sun has gone down. It was a little sketchy getting out there. I stayed a little bit later than I wanted to, and I forgot my spotlight in the truck. So I had to navigate my entire way back through a very sketchy cattle lake that has a bunch of trees and timber sticking up in almost complete darkness. That was really scary, but I just went really slow and just, you know, navigate my way through using Navionics. So all good, made it back safe, but another very tough day of fishing for sure. It's been hard, but got the fish I was after. So freaking stoked. That just changed everything. I mean, I had a good feeling I have a chance of getting one. That's why, you know, been staying out there all day, been, you know, pursuing one, knowing that, you know, I'm not gonna get a lot of fish, but the bites I do get, they're gonna be big. And I knew that and I got my chance and I capitalized on it and I made up for yesterday. So really freaking stoked about that. Just so freaking happy. But tomorrow I have a new venture me going on. Tomorrow morning, we're waking up early, bright and early that is, to go up to Lake of the Pines, which is a lake about 30 minutes north of here. I guess it's kind of like northwest really more. It's more west than is north um, from where we're staying. But heading over there, I've never fished the lake before. It's a lake I've wanted to fish for a long time. I was gonna try and fish it last summer, never had the chance to. So tomorrow is gonna be my first day ever fishing it. And yes, just like Caddo, it is flooded. I mean, hell, the, what, the water in Lake of the Pines is dumping into Caddo. That's why Caddo is so flooded. But the good thing is, it's not affected the fishing as much, at least what the reports have been saying. So hopefully tomorrow should be a little bit better numbers wise, at least. So I have no idea how it's gonna be size wise. And there's a lot of really big fish in this lake. This lake's actually really insane. Don't know how we're gonna do considering it's hot, considering it's a new lake, considering it's flooded. But I have a good feeling we should at least be able to get on some fish. So with that, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and retie some lures here real quickly, get to bed, and then head out bright early in the morning to fish Lake of the Pines. I'll see y'all then.